is now. In life, all of us must have gone through a situation where we often say, Dil or Dimaag ki ladai. But do you know, in reality, there is no fight as such. Because heart can never think. And all our emotions, whether positive or negative, and all our judgments, whether logical or illogical, are made by one and the only brain. And it is our brain only which is fighting all these multiple thoughts, and the eventual winner is brain. So brain is the master, the king. Have you ever imagined, and has it ever come to your thought, how does brain control everything in your body, right from your thoughts to your actions? How does one become as smart as Einstein? How does one become a multitasker? How many thoughts cross your mind in a second? Even when I am standing here talking in front of you, whatever I speak, whatever I do, even this moment of hand, the signals in the brain are generated micro milliseconds before I even do it. Do you know? The signals in brain travel faster than the bullet train. Brain has around 90 million neurons and a thousand trillion connections, which makes all of this possible. Now, this is Mr. Singh. In 2022, a former wrestler, living a healthy, happy, fairy tale life, has got no risk factor for any disease. Cut to 2024, I get a call early in the morning from my hospital that there is a young male in a comatose condition, unconscious. I did a small surgery on him, removed the clot from the blood vessel supplying his brain, and here he is, 2024. Better. But not everyone is as lucky as him. Did you notice the age of the patient here? He's just 25. Imagine, imagine having a stroke at 25. There is a popular misconception that stroke is a disease of elderly. It cannot happen when you are young. But as per data, around 15 to 20 percent of people who suffer stroke are below the age of 50 years. And imagine what a havoc and disaster it can be to someone's life and his families, leaving him disabled forever for life. Stroke is one of the leading cause of disability in the world and the second most common cause of mortality. Stroke has an incidence in India around 150 to 170 per lakh, which means that every 40 seconds, somebody has a stroke in India. And every four minutes, somebody dies from it. But even unfortunate is the fact that less than 1% of these patients get timely treatment. Now, how can you do it? How can you really think about it? Now, let's apply this population to Surat. In Surat district, around 35 people will have stroke every day. And not even one, mind it, not even one person will have the timely and the adequate treatment. So how can we change it? We should do it, something to change it. Now, the current mainstays of treatment for stroke are two. One, either we dissolve the clots, which has blocked the artery supplying the blood by some medicine, or take it out mechanically by doing a small pinhole procedure known as mechanical thrombectomy. But the problem is the patients reaching late to the hospital or them reaching to a hospital where their facilities are not available. Or the patients living in far-flung areas where they don't have access to such facilities. How do we really make a difference? Imagine, imagine a situation where anybody has an access to an app or EMS number. So anybody who suffers a stroke has an access to an EMS number through which he can dial or call or just touch. And this app connects him to an expert stroke, a stroke expert sitting at the back end. And he, in turn, is connected to a group of ambulance providers and stroke-ready hospitals. So as soon as somebody has a stroke, he dials this number, this SOS number, this EMS number, and gets connected to stroke experts sitting at the back end. 
they in turn connect him to the nearby ambulance providers and also inform the hospital so that when the patient reaches the hospital, the patient, the treating team is already ready to treat him in time. And you don't lose any time for the treatment because time is brain. And every minute we lose in opening up these blood vessels, it leads to 2 lakh, around 1.9 million neurons to be dead forever, leaving a mark on your brain and on your life forever. Now, see this news. All of us must have come across such news, and most of us will either ignore it or probably feel bad about it. Here is another neurological disease, epilepsy, or as in layman term we call it, mirgi, in which the brain misfires and the patient has multiple fits or convulsions. Most of the patients who have convulsions, they don't know when they are going to have another seizure. So they are not able to save themselves. If we have some app, some application, some device, which warns the patient beforehand that he is going to have a seizure, it can be a life changer for him. Though strokes are not deadly or fatal by themselves, in most of the cases. But depending upon the circumstance where a seizure happens, this seizure can be devastating, such as while crossing the road, while swimming, while near, sitting near a water body, or while cooking in a kitchen, or the circumstance which we just saw. So if the patient is warned in time that he or she is going to have another seizure, he can really safeguard himself. On the similar lines, we have certain devices in cardiology, like smart watches, which detect the abnormality in the heart rhythm and warn the patient about the variation in his heart rate and heart rhythm. Something similar in neurology to detect the brain activity, the abnormality in the brain activity, and warn the patient beforehand can really be a game changer. When I was taking neurosciences as a young kid after clearing uh, my examinations, I was asked, why do you want to take neurology? Neurology is considered dull and boring. You can just diagnose the patient and do nothing. You cannot cure the patient. You cannot change the course of the disease. So why is it that you want to become a neurologist? And I used to ask them, was it the same with the other diseases or the other specialties some decades back? Now, who amongst us would have thought around 10, 15 years back that sitting in this auditorium with a smartphone in our hand, we can really do anything and everything we want by just a touch or a click. And as Mark Penn said, any idea is a crank until the idea succeeds. Let me talk to you about some anecdotes from my life. When I used to visit my maternal grandfather as a young kid, I found him behaving strange. He used to sit in one corner of the house doing nothing and asking the same questions repetitively, again and again. When I asked my family members, what has happened to him? I was told that grandfather is becoming old. Or as a popular saying in rural India goes, Buddha satya gaya. It was only later in my life as a medical student, I realized that he was suffering from a disease known as Alzheimer's disease or Alzheimer's dementia, which is one of the most common neurological diseases affecting elderly, in which the patient starts losing his memory and with time becomes completely dependent upon the family members and the caregivers. Unfortunately, the disease like Alzheimer's is not only a burden for the patient, but for the caregiver as well as family members. Around 75% of the patients who have dementia are undiagnosed which can go up to 90% in socio low socioeconomic country like ours. On the similar lines, we have disease such as Parkinson's disease, in which a person becomes slow, stiff, frigid, has repetitive falls, has tremulousness, cannot do anything by himself in later part of the disease. Now let me tell you an interesting fact. Diseases like Alzheimer's dementia and Parkinson's disease, which are some of the most common neurological diseases affecting elderly, 
they start decades before they actually start showing their symptoms. There is a window of opportunity of around 15 to 20 years when the disease has already started but has not shown in symptoms. But if diagnosed in this window of opportunity and this time, we can really alter the course of the disease. Though we have certain biomarkers, but there are a lot of gaps that need to be filled. The ultimate aim is to diagnose these diseases in this golden period when the diseases have not shown the symptoms and change the course of disease, halt their progression, slow their progression, change the course so that we can manage these patients, we can do something about them. In whatever little time I had, I used the limited neurons in my brain with their limited connections to give you some limited ideas and possibilities. Now imagine, imagine a world where technology is advanced enough to lend you the power to craft your brain's future. Imagine a world where technology detects an epileptic fit before it actually strikes you. Imagine a world where we diagnose Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or other neurological diseases decades before they start affecting you so that empowering you to do something about them. Imagine today's ideas and imagination and science merge together, merge together in ways we never considered possible, and they help us in revolutionizing healthcare. The neurons in the brain, they are not just firing, they're sending us signals that the future, future is right here, it's already here. And here's the amazing part about it. It's not the technology that does it. It's you using your own brain's infinite capacity to innovate. Thank you.